This is Twit. Okay, so uh, uh, as you correctly guessed what the first issue of the day was, which are two new unpatched zero days affecting billions of Windows users. Um, their advisory, Microsoft's advisory, was published just yesterday on the 23rd of March, um, titled Type 1 Font Parsing Remote Code Execution Vulnerability. They said, Microsoft is aware of limited targeted attacks that could leverage unpatched vulnerabilities in the Adobe Type Manager library and is providing the following guidance to help reduce customer risk during the sec- until the security update is released. They said two remote code execution vulnerabilities exist in Microsoft Windows when the Windows Adobe Type Manager library improperly handles a specially crafted multi-master font, Adobe Type 1 PostScript font. They said there were multiple ways an attacker could exploit the vulnerability, such as convincing a user to open a specially crafted document or viewing it in the Windows preview pane. They said Microsoft is aware of this vulnerability and is working on a fix. Also, they're aware of attacks in the wild, that thus it's a zero day. They said updates that address security vulnerabilities in Microsoft software are typically released on update Tuesday the second Tuesday of each month. This predictable schedule allows for partner quality assurance and IT planning, which helps maintain the Windowsy blah, 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 blah. So basically they're saying, we're sticking to Patch Tuesday for this. Uh, coincidentally, and unfortunately, this is the one of those months which has the latest possible Patch Tuesday, where the, uh, the 31st of March is... Uh, what is it? The 31st of March is next Tuesday. So the first is the following Wednesday and the second Tuesday is as far back as it could be. So three weeks from today, essentially. Um, Both of the unpatched flaws are known to be used in limited targeted attacks and they impact all supported versions of the Windows operating system, I guess because the Adobe Font Type Manager library has been there through all of them. Uh, Windows 10, 8.1, Server 2008, 12, 16, and 19, and Windows 7, uh, which, of course, we know for which Microsoft ended their support as they did for Server 2008 in January. Um, The vulnerabilities reside in this Adobe font type manager library, which is a font parsing and display subsystem used by Windows Explorer to display the content of a file in the preview or the details panes without users needing to open it. So this is potentially a you don't have to do anything exploit. Um, It's also used by many pieces of third party software. It's part of Windows. So third party software can just presume that that this library will answer the call. Um, The problem is that the, the type manager library is improperly handling a specially crafted multi master font in the type one postscript format. And it allows remote attackers to execute arbitrary malicious code on target systems. Who was it said Um, interpreters are hard? Oh yeah, uh, Steve Gibson. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So the obvious attack route involves convincing a user to open a specially crafted document or viewing it in the Windows preview pane. Uh, It's not clear whether the flaws can also be triggered remotely over a web browser by convincing a user to wi- to visit a web page containing specially crafted malicious OTF fonts. Um, and there are multiple ways an attacker might be able to exploit the vulnerability. And, and interestingly enough, Microsoft mentions the WebDAV, the Web Distributed Authoring and Versioning Client Service, as another vector into the system. Um, so... Uh, it's clear Is that Microsoft's implementation of WebDAV or WebDAV in general? Because no, WebDAV is you know, it, widely used. Right. So it's not. It, it's just that WebDAV is a way in ah. to get to this this faulty library. Right. Well, there's lots um, of ways to get so, to the library. That's easy. Yeah. So so they are all offering some workarounds. Uh, I like the final one. 
which is final in several senses. Install Linux, um, right? That, <laughs> that's the Leo solution. That's, that's I swear right. to God, I, I don't run <laughs> Windows on any machines anymore. It's just ridiculous. No. It's ridiculous. No. This is all versions of Windows too, right? Yep. All, all even Windows 7, even yeah, all versions. Windows 10. Yes. And Microsoft knows of it. It's being used in targeted attacks. Zero day. We it's a zero day. It's a zero day. And we also know that zero days are kept quiet and sneaky until they are discovered, at which point they then change their tactic. They want to get everybody they can before the patch shuts them down. So, yes, Microsoft, when you posted this news, it was used in selective, yeah. you know, targeted, stealthy attacks. Now it's probably being sprayed. Because they want to do as much as they they want to get as much action out out, out of this before it is it's shut now down. Now or never, yeah. And again, Microsoft is using apparently the fact that it is in targeted attacks to say, well, you know, three weeks that's not going to be so bad. Good luck. Uh, so it is possible <laughs> to <laughs> it's possible to set the there is an option under the view settings of Windows Explorer, you know, the, the thing that we use for viewing our files in Windows, um, not Internet Explorer, Windows Explorer, or just Explorer, um, you can turn on a checkbox, always show icons, never thumbnails. So if you enable that, then, so that what that does is that prevents Explorer from going out to Adobe and asking if for its help in rendering a thumbnail to show you in the preview pane or in the uh, summary pane, so you can you can turn that on if you want to thwart this one avenue in. However, they also recommend uh, disabling the web client service under Windows, and you could do that by getting going to the Windows services, scrolling all the way down to W's where you'll find Windows web client, and. Uh, mine was set to manual and auto trigger. Th they want you to set it to disabled so nothing will start it. And so that helps you solve another, you know, like a different entry into the system. But nobody's going to no, know. <laughs> nobody except you and people who know what they're doing is going to know about this or do it. Yeah. Yeah. And well, and that's the problem is that the, you know, our listeners who listen because they like these little yeah, kinds of. This is why you listen. Things, yeah. Exactly. They'll be safe. But the rest of the world is now subject to three weeks of probably an escalating attack using this. You couldn't pick a worse three weeks, of course, because everybody's working from home. They took those Windows machines home. Um, yep. If I were a bad guy, you know what I'd do? I'd take advantage of that time, get on as many systems as possible so that when they're brought back to work, you could really get you could have some fun. Well, also, we are seeing a, hu an un a sadly predictable, oh, yeah. huge upswing in, <laughs> in coronavirus leveraged attacks. It's, it's you know, so I know it's just unbelievable. We, we talked last week about some actual DDoS attacks on, on medical infrastructure. I did see one little note saying that some of the ransomware people were going to lay off the health services industry oh. during this time. Yeah, I hope so, that's, a, that, that, that's universal. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so the problem would be that if this can be leveraged in a social engineering attack, this is a time when lots of people are very worried about this problem yeah, and yeah. are thus more subject to not thinking before they click. And so, as we've often said, one of our we haven't used this little pithy bit of advice for quite a while. It's never download anything that is offered to you. Period. I just yeah, I, that's period. a golden oldie. Yep. Period. If something says, "Oh, you need to update your flash player," no, uh, you know, never download something that is offered. Only go and get it yourself if you have reason to believe you need it, yeah. because you know, first of all. Everything seems to be working just fine without this thing that you're now told you need. So, so just blow it off. Just no. Okay, but just to finish, in the show notes, I've got Microsoft's good advice, which they saved to last because it's the most onerous, and that is to rename this, this DLL. It's ATMFD, 
dot DLL. And there are two scripts, one for 32-bit systems and a double-length one for 64-bit systems. Uh, it switches you, you use it from the command prompt. I'm sure you have to be a, a, an, an elevated command prompt, an admin command prompt. Switches you to the Windows directory system32, then runs the take own command to take ownership of that DLL, then runs the access control list utility, icacls.exe, saving the existing access control list for atmfd.dll into a temporary file, then grants at admins access to the DLL, then renames, which you are now an admin, renames atmf.dll to x hyphen atmf.dll. Basically, that just means that no one in the system that expects to be able to simply load this Adobe Type Manager DLL will then succeed. So that forecloses all access to it. Um, again, I, you know, limited uh, uh, targeted attacks. It's unlikely that any individual that we're talking to will get hit by this. But in the interest of caution, uh, if presumably in three weeks, the update will replace this DLL with the right one. So the old one, the X hyphen ATMF dot, oh, and, the, and on 64-bit systems, you have to do it twice because there's the 64-bit systems have the old 32-bit and the new 64-bit versions. So it does it twice, but it's, it's quick to do. And if I were concerned, that's what I would do. It just removes this ATM, this Adobe Type Manager DLL from your system by renaming it to something that's, you know, will never be seen. And then in three weeks, the update will replace that empty slot with a, a, a fixed uh, ATM uh, DLL. Now, do we blame Adobe or Microsoft for this? I don't know. Um, and maybe that explains the delay. If maybe if this were Microsoft's own code, they'd be able to say, oh, crap, and like jump on it immediately and fix it. It may be that because this thing is actually an Adobe problem, right. uh, you know, they've had to work through just the, the you know, the intercorporate stuff. And Adobe said, oh, well, uh, you know, we'll work on it and get it to you in so a couple weeks. So these type and, one fonts are an Adobe font style. And usually on they're Windows. The, they're the early. They're early, early right. Then true type forever. took over. And so you see those. OTF fonts are the older ones and TTF are the, are the newer ones. And the type manager was necessary, I guess, for rendering the fonts. But it might be a Microsoft product that's labeled Adobe Type Manager because it's for managing the Adobe Type 1 fonts. So it's unclear, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, and I was about to go click on it and check its properties because we, we, <laughs> we could see we could see where it came from, um, except that. Um, even if it came from Adobe, Microsoft might, you know, might take ownership right. of it and and wrap it in their own, uh, in in their own uh, 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 shell. So you're so, looking for uh, atmfddll dot ddll, right? That's if you delete yeah. that, you're good, right? Yeah. Okay. And and there's two of them. Is there one thirty two that says atmfd thirty two dot dll or? Yeah, well, actually, they're in different directories, so they're oh. all atmfd.dll. Uh, I just hate I how Windows is made. Oh my it's god! It's real. Well, it's it's they've had this they really the awkward problem. There. Yeah, yeah, and we've got now we got the program files x86, <sighs> which was like, and then they decided, oh, we made a mistake with that, so we're going to abandon it's that so approach. Ugly. It's really become oh. yeah, it's really become a problem oh. <laughs> through the years. Yeah. Uh, there is a registry tweak also in the show notes that applies to Windows 8.1 and earlier. So if you are a Windows 7 user, uh, you could apply, just apply this registry tweak that should take it uh, offline and out of service. Uh, and then that should be good also. It's, okay. <laughs> it's a mess. Yeah, it's in the show notes, but it's not as a download. It's a actual edit. You have to do, is that? <laughs> oh my God! Yes, yeah, no one's gonna do this. <laughs> yeah, look at it. It's a, just a mess. 
<laughs> it's the uh, HKey Local Machine Software Microsoft Windows NT Current Version Windows Disable ATMFD equals D word colon. Can you just write one, or do you have to write zero 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 one? Uh, I think you, you can write, write one. one. It's just I true. Think, yeah. 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 Jeez Louise. <laughs>